Yeah. Okay. Um, a merry heart doeth good like a medicine, the Bible says. <clears throat> now, you know, this, a merry heart is something that can take you through some hard times. And when you look at life in general, and you think about all the work that you have to do, you think about hospital visits that is in the future of family and friends and maybe even yourself. And you say, what in the world do I have to be happy about? You know, like, like I need to go to the dentist. and <laughs> That's going to be in my future. And I am not looking forward to that. But I can be cheerful about my life still because I know that God's got my back. <clears throat> now, a lot of people don't have that assurance that God has their back, you know. Listen, I know tribulation is coming. I know that the Bible says in Revelation 9 that hell is going to be literally poured out onto the earth. And I know that's coming. I know that hard times are coming for those who don't repent and turn their heart over to the Lord Jesus. I know that. I know some of those are going to be friends that I care about. I know that. But a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. You see what I'm saying? There are some things that you're just not going to be able to do anything about. You're just not going to be able to change some things in this life. And that gets really depressing. And when you look at those things you, and you look at what the Lord says, He says, I have come that you might have joy and that your joy might be full. And that's why he left in here. A merry heart does good like a medicine. Look, let's read a little bit of this. Proverbs 17. I could actually read this whole chapter, man. It's just, it's filled with so much wisdom of what God meant for us. Psalms 1 and 1 is filled with wisdom of what God meant to bring us joy. The first thing that David did in the book of Psalms was told us how to keep our joy, told us how to keep our blessing. And that's, it's, it's one thing to win the lottery, but it's quite another to keep it. You know what I'm saying? I already put that in my heading. It's one thing to win the lottery, but it's another thing to keep. You know, I I had a house that I, um, that I received when I was a young man. I was only about 20 years old. And... Uh, uh, I bought that with house. Uh, I bought that house with money that I had um, received through um, a, a, a hard time of suffering. That house was paid for with blood, sweat, and tears of a very, very young man, literally. Okay, and I don't want to elaborate on that, but I was. I want to say this, that there's a train coming by. <laughs> a loud one. Boy, that's a loud train. Um, I want to say this about that house, okay? I, I received that house, but it was a struggle to keep it. I got that house, man, and I, you know, it shocked me when I found out that even though I owned that house, it wasn't really mine. And I found that out when I received this paper through the mail saying that if you don't pay these taxes, we're going to throw you out of your house. <laughs> yeah. Shocking, isn't it? So, and I also received a letter from the electricity company that says, if you don't pay this bill, we're going to turn the lights off that's in your house. <laughs> you know, and I quickly found out if I didn't work, then I don't eat. 
and my family that was in my house they needed to be fed in so much that I saw my during the recession back in the 80s I saw my young daughter get so hungry that she threw up that broke my heart broke my heart and I made a promise to the Lord I said Lord if you will make sure that my family is fed I will serve you to the best of my ability all of the days of my life and I have tried I have tried to keep that covenant with God and and God to this day has not let me go hungry has not let me go hungry and I am still able to when that daughter gets short on things guess who she calls <laughs> she calls she calls mom and dad that's right and and uh, keeping something a blessing from God is it's totally different than getting it getting it seems to be the easy part <laughs> keeping it you know and I finally did uh, get rid of that house years later we, we lived there 35 years 31 31 years <laughs> okay and um, my my son has the house now I sold him the house and we sold the house through a process of helping other people now listen this is what the Bible says anything that you sacrifice here God will pay you back a hundredfold in this life and in the life to come a hundredfold that means that in heaven I'll have a hundred houses you think God can't do that and that's you know something that's not that's not my word that's his that's not me being greedy that's God saying I'm gonna pour this blessing out on you now I don't need a hundred houses here I may not even need them there but heaven is not about need heaven is not about greed heaven is about blessing heaven is about blessing and heaven is about a merry heart <laughs> that we never have to worry about losing again you don't have to fight to keep a merry heart in heaven but down here on this earth we have to fight just to keep a merry heart those things that I was blessed with that God that I, that I earned and God allowed me to have those blessings um, I had to fight to keep them listen and when you are in this life and you're seeking out after a merry heart you've got a choice to make man you can concentrate on the bad or you can focus on the good but Jesus is that which will keep your heart merry Proverbs 17 um, 22 says a merry heart does good like a medicine but a broken spirit drieth the bones so you got a choice, man. You could. You ever seen some old grouchy people, man? And they walk around. I'm a Christian. <coughs> Don't you dare tell me I'm not either. Ra 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 ra. You know. What do you mean? Sitting in my seat. I know that I belong there. You've seen me sit there for the past 17 years. And I'm making another 17. <laughs> If you'll get out of my chair, and you know, and you think this stuff no, tr go to church Sunday, sit in somebody's seat where you know they sit, and watch the look on their face, on their Christian supposed to be be a Christian. You know what they choose? They're choosing. It's not that they're not Christian. It's that they're focusing on the bad. They're focusing on the bad. You know what? When a person that focuses on the good sees you sitting in their seat. They come and sit right beside you. Man, my friend wanted to come and sit with me today. The thought of, he's in my seat, doesn't even enter into their mind. It's gone. They don't think about it. When you're focusing on the good, you don't see it. Some of you guys out there, you have a terrible time with you. 
your wife, Honey, you're so much skinnier now. What are you saying? I used to be fat. <laughs> you know, they don't, they don't focus on the good. Okay. They ain't focus. You know, I've got a friend. You, you know something? Man, when I get to heaven and Jesus walks up, and he gives me that hug and he says, enter you into the joys of the Lord. What is not going to be on my mind is, where you been? How come you didn't do this before? Why did I have to suffer? Blah, blah. I'm not going to focus. Listen, all that focus on the bad junk is going to go right out the window. Mm, not me, buddy. It's not going to ruin my joy. I choose joy today. I choose joy today. Amen. All right. God bless you. Thank you for joining me. We'll see you again next time. Crossing the Middle Ministry. Choose joy.